IG Farben was a German chemical industry conglomerate, notorious for its role in the Holocaust. Its name is taken from interest in Gemeinschaft Farben Industrie AG. The company was formed in 1925 from a number of major chemical companies that had been working together closely since World War I. During its heyday, IG Farben was the largest chemical company in the world and the fourth largest overall industrial concern, after General Motors, U.S. Steel, and Standard Oil of New Jersey. Following the Nazi takeover of Germany, IG Farben became involved in numerous war crimes during World War II. Most notoriously, the firm's pro-Nazi leadership openly and knowingly collaborated with the Nazi government to produce the large quantities of Zykel and be necessary to gas to death millions of Jews and other undesirables at various extermination camps during the Holocaust. The firm ceased operating following the fall of Nazi Germany in 1945, when the company was seized by the Allies. Its assets were entirely liquidated in 1952, and 13 executives were imprisoned for terms ranging from one to eight years at the Nuremberg trials for their roles in the atrocities. Engulfed by lawsuits and universal condemnation after the war's end, the company continued to exist as a shell with the sole stated goal of continuing to do business so it may pay many millions of marks in reparations to the victims of its many crimes. It has been criticized over the years for paying almost no claims. Founding members, IG Farben was founded on December 25, 1925, as a merger of the following six companies, BASF, Bayer, Herchst, Aigfer, Chemische Fabrik Grisham Electron, Chemische Fabrik Vorm. Violet Harris-Meyer, History, Predecessors of IG Farben, at the beginning of the 20th century, the German chemical industry dominated the world market for synthetic dyes. The three major firms BASF, Bayer and Hirsch produced several hundred different dyes, along with the five smaller firms Aigfer, Kasseler, Chemische Fabrik Kohl, Chemische Fabrik Grisham Electron and Chemische Fabrik Vorm. Violet Amir concentrated on high-quality speciality dyes. In 1913, these eight firms produced almost 90% of the world's supply of dye stuffs and sold about 80% of their production abroad. The three major firms had also integrated upstream into the production of essential raw materials, and they began to expand into other areas of chemistry such as pharmaceuticals, photographic film, agricultural chemicals and electrochemicals. Contrary to other industries, the founders and their families had little influence on the top-level decision-making of the leading German chemical firms, which was in the hands of professional salaried managers. Because of this unique situation, the economic historian Alfred Chandler called the German dye companies the world's first truly managerial industrial enterprises. With the world market for synthetic dyes and other chemical products dominated by the German industry, German firms competed vigorously for market shares. Although cartels were attempted, they lasted at most for a few years. Others argued for the formation of a profit pool or interest in Gemeinschaft. In contrast, the chairman of Bayer, Karl Duisberg, argued for a merger. During a trip to the United States in the spring of 1903 he had visited several of the large American trusts such as Standard Oil, U.S. Steel, International Paper and Alco. In 1904, after having returned to Germany he proposed a nationwide merger of the producers of dye and pharmaceuticals in a memorandum to Gustav von Brauen Kortening, the senior manager at Hirschst. Hirschst and several pharmaceutical firms refused to join. Instead, Hirschst and Kassler made an alliance based on mutual equity stakes in 1904. This prompted Duisberg and Heinrich von Brunk, chairman of BASF, to accelerate their negotiations. In October 1904, an interest in Gemeinschaft between Bayer, BASF and Aigfer was formed, also known as the Drebund or Little IG. Profits of the three firms were pooled, with BASF and Bayer getting 43% and Aigfer 14% of all profits. The two alliances were loosely connected with each other through an agreement between BASF and Hirsch to jointly exploit the patent on the human Fledger indigo synthesis. Within the Drebund, Bayer and BASF concentrated on dye, whereas Aigfer increasingly concentrated on photographic film. 
Although there was some cooperation between the technical staff in production and accounting, there was little cooperation between the firms in other areas. Neither were production or distribution facilities consolidated nor did the commercial staff cooperate. In 1908 Hirsch and Kassler acquired 88% of the shares of Shemesh Fabrique Call. As Hirsch, Kassler and Call were connected by mutual equity shares and were located close to each other in the Frankfurt area, this allowed them to cooperate more successfully than the Drebund, although they also did not rationalize or consolidate their production facilities. Foundation of IG Farben IG Farben was founded on December 25, 1925 as a merger of the following six companies, BASF, Bayer, Hirschst including Kassler and Shemesh Fabrique Call, Aigfa, Shemesh Fabrique Grisham Electron and Shemesh Fabrique Vorm. Violet Erasmia. In 1926, IG Farben had a market capitalization of 1.4 billion Reichsmark and a workforce of 100,000 people, of which 2.6% were university educated, 18.2% were salaried professionals and 79.2% were workers. BASF was the nominal survivor. All shares were exchanged for BASF shares. Similar mergers took place in other countries. In the United Kingdom Brunham and Nobel Industries, United Alkali Company and British Dye Staffs merged to form Imperial Chemical Industries in September 1926. In France a Permel Tablissements Poulenc Frares and Socia Copyright Tar Copyright Comique des Usines du René merged to form René Poulenc in 1928. The IG Farben Building, headquarters for the conglomerate in Frankfurt am Main, Germany, was completed in 1931. In 1938, the company had 218,000 employees. World War II Overview During the planning of the occupation of Czechoslovakia and the invasion of Poland, IG Farben cooperated closely with Nazi officials and directed which chemical plants should be secured and delivered to IG Farben. In 1941, an investigation exposed a marriage cartel between John D. Rockefeller's United States based Standard Oil Company and IG Farben. It also brought new evidence concerning complex price and marketing agreements between DuPont, a major investor in and producer of leaded gasoline, United States Industrial Alcohol Company and its subsidiary, Cuba Distilling Company. The investigation was eventually dropped, like dozens of others in many different kinds of industries, due to the need to enlist industry support in the war effort. However, the top directors of many oil companies agreed to resign and oil industry stocks and molasses companies were sold off as part of a compromise worked out. IG Farben held the patent for the pesticide Zycolin B, and owned 42.2% of Dejish which manufactured it. IG Farben also had managers in Dejish's managing committee. Of the 24 directors of IG Farben indicted in the so-called IG Farben trial before a U.S. military tribunal at the subsequent Nuremberg trials, 13 were sentenced to prison terms between 1 and 8 years. Some of those indicted in the trial were subsequently made leaders of the post-war companies that split off from IG Farben, including those who were sentenced at Nuremberg. Some of the people who served prison sentences but later became leaders in post-war companies include, Hermann Schmitz, who became a member of the Supervisory Board for the Deutsche Bank in Berlin and Honorary Chairman of the Supervisory Board of Rheinisch Stahlwerk AG, Georg von Schnitzler, serving as president of the Deutsche Bureau Amerikanische Gesellschaft, Fritz Tamir, becoming chairman of the supervisory board of Bayer AG and a supervisory board member of several firms, Otto Ambrose, holding seats on supervisory boards Chemi Gra 1 Kortenenthal, Feldmer 1 Kortele, and Telfunken, and working as an economic consultant. In Mannheim, Heinrich Bar 1 Quarter to Fisch becoming a member of the supervisory boards for Deutsche Gasoline AG, Feldmer one Quartele, and Papier und Zellstoffwerk AG, and consulting with Ortumi AG Oberhausen and subsequently joining its supervisory board. Max Ial GNER, becoming the chairman of the executive board of a chemistry firm in Zug, Heinrich Oster, becoming a member of the supervisory board of Gelsenberg AG. Some of the people who were acquitted and later became leaders in post-war companies include, Fritz Gajewski, becoming chairman of the board of Dynamit Nobel. Christian Schneider, 
becoming a member of the supervisory boards of Tsar One Quarter Duch Cork Stickstoff Worker AG Trussberg and Rienor Holtz Hydrolyse GmbH, Mannheim, Hans Karl One Quarter HNE, taking a position at Bayer Elbefeld. Karl Lawton's Herr Currency Gare, becoming a research associate at Bayer Elbefeld. Wilhelm Rudolf Mann, resuming his position as head of pharmaceutical sales at Bayer. He also presided over the GFK, Society for Consumer Research, and the Foreign Trade Committee of the BDI, Federation of German Industry. Karl Werster, resuming his position of chairman of the managing board, and was the major force behind the re-establishment of BASF. After retiring, he continued to be active as a member and chairman of supervisory boards in companies such as Bosch, Degussa, and Alliance. Heinrich Gattino, becoming a member of the board and supervisory council of WASAG Chemie AG, and Mattel Deutsch Sprengstoff Worker GmbH. Facilities during World War II, IG Farben facilities were bombing targets of the oil campaign of World War II, and up to 1941, there were five Nazi Germany Bunner plants that produced Bunner N by the Lebedev process. Dwory, the Bunner chemical plant at Dwory was under construction by 1943, after a March 2, 1942 contract with IG Farben Industrie AG Auschwitz. The Bunner Worker plant, which produced synthetic oil and rubber, was the beginning of SS activity and camps near Auschwitz III Monowitz during the Holocaust. At its peak in 1944, this factory made use of 83,000 slave laborers. Today, the plant operates as Dwory SA, Frankfurt, in addition to the cavernous IG Farben building at Frankfurt, a Hirschst AG chemical factory in Frankfurt was bombed by the RAF on September 26, 1944. Ludwig Scharfen and Apey, the IG Farben industry, AG, works, Ludwig Scharfen and Apey had several chemical plants. Par paragraph Litz, North Germany, in 1937, IG Farben, Renania Lossig, and Deutsch Amerikanische Petroleum Gesellschaft founded the Hydrewerk Par Paragraph Litz AG synthetic fuel plant. By 1943, the plant produced 15% of Nazi Germany's synthetic fuels, 577,000 tons. Waldenburg, an IG Farben plant, was at Waldenburg, breakup and liquidation due to the severity of the war crimes committed by IG Farben during World War II, the company was considered to be too corrupt to be allowed to continue to exist. The Soviet Union seized most of IG Farben's assets located in the Soviet occupation zone, as part of their reparation payments. The Western Allies however, in 1951, split the company up into its original constituent companies. The four largest quickly bought the smaller ones. Today Aikfa, BASF, and Bayer remain, Hirschst having in 1999 demerged its industrial chemical operations to Selenese AG and merged its life sciences businesses with Rene Poulinks to form Aventus. Part of Hirschst later became Selenese AG, while another part of the company was sold in 1997 to the chemical spin-off of Sanders, the Muttons-based Clariant. IG Farben was officially put into liquidation in 1952, this did not end the company's legal existence. The purpose of the corporation's continuing existence, being in liquidation, is to ensure an orderly wind-down of its affairs. In 2001, IG Farben announced it would formally wind up its affairs in 2003. It has been continually criticized over the years for failing to pay any compensation to the former laborers, which was the stated reason for its continued existence after 1952. The company, in turn, blamed ongoing legal disputes with the former captive laborers as being the reason it could not be legally dissolved and the remaining assets distributed as reparations. On November 10, 2003, its liquidators filed for insolvency, but again, this does not affect the existence of the company as a legal entity. While it did not join a national compensation fund set up in 2001 to pay the victims, it contributed 500,000 decimeters towards a foundation for former captive laborers under the Nazi regime. The remaining property, worth DM 21 million, went to a buyer. Each year, the company's annual meeting in Frankfurt was the site of demonstrations by hundreds of protesters. Its stock traded on German markets until the spring of 2012. 
As of 2012, it still exists as a corporation in liquidation. IG Farben Trial, the United States of America vs. Carl Crouch, AL, also known as the IG Farben Trial, was the sixth of the twelve trials for war crimes the U.S. authorities held in their occupation zone in Germany after the end of World War II, against leading industrialists of Nazi Germany for their conduct during the Nazi regime. The defendants in this case had all been directors of IG Farben. Of the 24 defendants arraigned, 13 were found guilty. The indictment was filed on May 3, 1947. The trial lasted from August 27, 1947 until July 30, 1948. All defendants who were sentenced to prison received early release. Most were quickly restored to their directorships, and some were awarded the Federal Cross of Merit. Products The products produced at IG Farben include synthetic dyes, nitrile rubber, polyurethane, prontosil, rosochin, and zycolin B, among others. Sarin was first discovered by IG Farben. IG Farben scientists made fundamental contributions to all areas of chemistry. Otto Baer discovered the polyaudition for the synthesis of polyurethane in 1937. Several IG Farben scientists were awarded a Nobel Prize. Carl Bosch and Friedrich Bergius were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1931 in recognition of their contributions to the invention and development of chemical high-pressure methods. Gerard Domagk was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1939 for the discovery of the antibacterial effects of prontosil. Kurt Alder was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1950 for his, their discovery and development of the dye and synthesis. I.G. Farben in Fiction, The Council of the Gods, produced in 1951 by, is an East German film about I.G. Farben's role in World War II and the subsequent trial. I.G. Farben plays a prominent role in Thomas Pynchon's novel, Gravity's Rainbow, primarily as the manufacturer of the elusive and mysterious plastic product Imipolex G. I.G. Farben plays a prominent role in Philip K. Dick's alternative history novel The Man in the High Castle. I.G. Farben is the company said to be supporting German terror activities and research of uranium ores in Brazil after World War II in Alfred Hitchcock's 1946 film Noir Notorious. In the Heart of Iron computer game series by Paradox Interactive, I.G. Farben is a tech team that excels at developing industrial technologies for Germany. I.G. Farben is the German consortium which buys DuPont in Kurt Vonnegut's novel Hocus Pocus. See also, Bernard Bernstein, I.G. Farben Building, I.G. Farben Trial, Monowitz Concentration Camp, Research Materials, Max Planck Society Archive, American I.G., References. Bibliography, Aftalian, Fred. Otto Theodor Benfei, A History of the International Chemical Industry. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, University of Pennsylvania Press, ISBN A0-8122-8207-8A, Beer, John Joseph, The Emergence of the German Dye Industry, Manchester, New Hampshire, Air Company Publishers, 1935-13835-0A-Bulkin-Joseph-The-Crime-and-Punishment-of-I.G.Farben-New-York-London-The-Free-Press-Division-of-Macmillan-Publishing-Company-ISBN-A0-02-1111-1 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 ISBN A 0 02 904630 0 0 Balkin, Joseph, Die. Unhealige Lions der IG Farben. Ein Interessent means Schaft im Dritten Reich, Frankfurt am Main, Campus Verlag, ISBN A 3 593 0 0 Chandler, Alfred Dupont, Scale and Scope, The Dynamics of Industrial Capitalism. Cambridge, Massachusetts, Belknot Press of Harvard University Press, ISBN A 0 674 78995 4. Dubois, J. R., Josiah E., The Devil's Chemists, Boston, OMA, Beacon Press, Asina B. O. 100 ENN DV 6 A., Hayes, Peter, Industry and Ideology I. G. Farben in the Nazi Era, Cambridge, United Kingdom, Cambridge University. Press, ISBN A 0 521 32948 5 Jeffries, Damuid, 
Hell's Cartel I.G. Farben and the Making of Hitler's War Machine, New York, Metropolitan Books Henry Holt and Company, ISBN A978-0-8050-9143-1 Kreierkamp, Hans Dieter, Die Entflechtung der IG Farben Industrie AG und die Gra 1 Quarter und Dung der Nachflugzeuge Zellafen, Vila Telgerschaft Far 1 Quarter at Site 25, 220 Euro 251, Retrieve 2008 10 27A. Plump, Gottfried, Die IG Farben Industrie AG, Wirtschaft, Technik und Politik 1904 Euro 1945, Berlin. Dunker and Humblot, ISBN A3 428 06892 0. Tamman, Helmut, Die IG Farben Industrie Aktien Gesellschaft, in Chemie Konzern in der Weimar Republik, Berlin, H. Tamman, ISBN A3 88344 001 9. External links, official homepage of the IG Farben successor BASF. Official homepage of the IG Farben successor Bayer, official homepage of the IG Farben successor Hurst, stock market prices of IG Farben.